Alec. Hey, Danielle. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this hey, is like the craziest thing, guys. Like, holy moly, this is my first time ever doing this. So thanks, Scout, for asking me to speak. Um, and I guess I'll give my little spiel. So my sobriety date is August 14th of 2010. I have a sponsor and I sponsor women and the whole sponsor lines all over the place. Um, I have a home group. We meet Tuesday night um, in Wales, Wisconsin. Oh yeah, I probably should say I'm from Waukesha, Wisconsin. Um, but yeah, so my home group, eight o'clock Tuesday night, we read the big book uh, cover to cover. So if you're ever in the area of Wisconsin, come check it out. There's a hundred of us young people just uh, enjoying life. Um, other than that, those are my little credentials for you guys. So I guess I'll get started right away. Um, I grew up in an alcoholic home. My dad is the alcoholic and nothing was super crazy for me. It seemed super normal, like I had nothing to compare it to. For me, the police coming to our house regularly was nothing crazy um, for me to go spend the night at my grandparents' house because my dad's too drunk was just normal. Like that was just what I did. And yeah, like I had nothing to compare it to. And then in kindergarten, when I started making friends, like my best friend, both her parents could probably benefit from AA. Um, you know, like, so our lives were very similar. And I remember we used to argue about whose house we were going to go to, um, you know, whoever's parent was like less drunk or it was less chaotic. Like we would go hang out at that person's house. And so in reality, yeah, like nothing was too crazy. So my parents then split when I was like eight years old and my mom found our, her 12 step program. She's an Al-Anon. And like, that's when my life like flipped upside down for me. Cause you know, my mom was like <laughs> trying to practice all of her principles and all of her affairs. And like, that was the foreign thing to me. So um, as my mom got into her Al-Anon program, my life started becoming uncomfortable. And like a lot of big things were like happening in when I was eight years old to 10. So my parents split and my mom's going to Al-Anon doing her thing. I found out I had a learning disability. So there was just like a lot of things happening for me. And it just like drove that wedge for me to make me feel like I didn't belong anywhere. You know, none of my friends' parents were divorced. None of my friends had a learning disability. None of my friends, you know, were going through the situations I was going through. And so at a very young age, I always remember just feeling different. And I didn't realize in the moment that it was happening. But when I look back, I can see like how I always still like had that like distance between us. And like these were friends that I grew up with my whole life, like from kindergarten all the way through high school. But there was always still just that, like, there's something different between us. And it wasn't until um, I, I drank for the first time that me and that best friend from kindergarten, the first day of kindergarten, we drank together. And I finally felt connected like between us and um most of my drinking revolves around my mom being at Al-Anon meetings or conferences or going to AA conferences because that was the only time that she would leave the house so my first drunk uh, ironically was when my mom was at her home group and you know we drank like just stale Coronas apparently they were in the refrigerator for two years I didn't know that at the time and we drank cooking wine. And I, of course, did not realize it was cooking wine until after the fact when I told my mom about my first drunken. I was like, you know, there was wine. And she was like, no, like I never buy wine. Like that would be cooking wine that you drank. And so needless to say, my first drunk was just like absolutely disgusting. And to make it worse, we, cause we were trying to be fancy little bartenders. We mixed the cooking wine and the beer with ginger ale. Like it was just like, <laughs> the most disgusting drunk ever <laughs> like so we're 10 years old like we don't know what we're doing but the biggest thing is like obviously didn't get drunk from that night got a little tipsy from the stale beer and all I knew was I was gonna do it again like that's all I knew from that night was like I am gonna do this again and I'm gonna do it the right way um I want to feel I want to I want to be drunk and so there on out like nothing too crazy was happening just still like that distance between me and my friends um, like school wasn't that great for me with my learning disability, but it was just like I had something to look forward to was to get drunk again. And so really, you know, it was just like whatever wine coolers we could steal from our parents' house, like 
that's what we would do. And then I remember there's the, this distinct moment, me and that best friend, we were sitting at my house. It's the summer going into high school and we're just talking and we we're just like, we want to be the party girls. Like that was like what our destiny was going to be. It was just like going into high school, like we were going to do everything we could do to be the party girls. And so like, that was it. Like, I was just like, Oh, how did I not think of this sooner? Like I finally found my future. And so, you know, it just like took off for me. Like my drunk log is like very short. It's really not that entertaining. Um, sorry guys. But um, like one funny moment was, so my mom's in Al-Anon. She got a part of the Wisconsin bid for Icky Paw. It was 2009. Um, so a year before I got sober. And so I'm having this massive party at my house and it just like gets out of control. Cause I'm finally, you know, to the point of my drinking career where it's just like, I no longer care anymore. Like I would do anything for anyone to make sure I could get drunk. And so like all these people are at my house, like my house is getting destroyed. Like people were egging the inside of my house. Like it was just like, it turned south real quick. And so, and I remember I had, it was the first moment where, um, like I just like really just like gave my life kind of to God. And I didn't realize in the moment, but I was just like sitting on my couch while all this chaos is ensuing in front of me. And I just like called my brother and I was just like, I need help. Like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Like I need help. And so like my brother comes over, he like kicks all the people out. The cops got called, like all this stuff. And so my mom of course is like in Atlanta, like bidding for Icky Paw. And then as the main speaker is about to like walk on stage, she gets the call from the police department to be like hey just so you know your daughter had an underage party at your house and like you know just like all this insanity going on around us um so when my mom got home she was like you are going so then of course uh icky paw was uh, awarded to new york so it was going to be in new york in 2010 and so my mom was just like you have to go to this conference like that was like one of the stipulations after this party she was like you have to go to icky paw in new york um, that's it. And she was like, you don't even have to attend the conference. Like we'll go out early, but like, you just physically have to be there with me. And so like, of course, like, I'm just like all salty. I'm like, Oh, I gotta go to a stupid A conference. Like it was so dumb. And like, you know, since my mom being an al like I wouldn't be punished normally. Like I wouldn't be grounded. She wouldn't take my car away. Like she would ground me to AA meetings. Like I would have to go like anytime I got caught drinking, like I'd be grounded to six AA meetings and I'd have to do that. So you know, like it was just like, okay, like just go to New York, like try to make fun of it, whatever. And so, you know, I continue with my drinking career and it just like went down real quick. I mean, so like that happened at the end of August, September and October. Um, I got caught drinking. I got arrested in two different cities and, you know, I'm like sitting in my bed and I'm just like, oh my God, like there's no way. I'm going to get drunk tomorrow. Like that was my first thought. Like after like just all of this insanity happening, it was just my first thought was like, I'm not going to get drunk tomorrow. And that scared me to death. And so I attempted suicide that night. And then, so I got sent to the psych ward and got sent to treatment. And we're just like doing all these, doing all the little hoops that I had jumped through or whatever. And I get out, you know, in December and then I, in February, then um, got caught again. I got sent to the hospital for ingesting too much. And it was just like, we're back at it again every couple months. And like, my mom just like looks at me and she's just like, what are you, like, what are we going to do? Like, I have no idea what to do with you right now. And again, like I had that moment of clarity and that moment of, you know, in the big book, it talks about it where it's just like, I had, I don't know. Like, I don't know. And that was like the most honest thing I've said in a very long time because I was so good up with coming up with excuses like, oh, I'm so stressed because of this or school or my learning disability or my dad's not in my life or blah, 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 blah. Like, didn't matter. I could come up with any excuse. But I did hit that point finally where it was just like, I don't know. Like, I don't know why I do this. I don't know why I can't stop. I just don't know what to do anymore. And so I get sent back to treatment you know, and we're, we're doing the deal or whatever. And so of course I get grounded to go to AA meetings and I start going to the well group, which is my home group. And it was just 
like just jumping through the hoops, like going through the emotions. Like I would get sober for a week or two and like not really trying or whatever. And then our area assembly was coming up or area conference. And of course my mom's like, you have to go to that. Like, but then there was the reward. She was like, you could get any piercing you want if you go to this conference. And I was like, bet mom, <laughs> like I will be there. Not knowing it was going to be some like dry area assembly, like not knowing any of that. So like I go there and just miserable, like just miserable with all these people. But then all of a sudden there was a group of young people that came swooping in and had a table set up for Wikipaw. And um, my mom like just threw me in there. She was like, here, go take my daughter. You sit at this table and whatever, I'm going to go do what I have to do. And so I just like started hanging out with these people and they're, I don't remember anything they said, but I just remembered that they talked to me. Like they, they just talked to me like they didn't ask really about like why I was there. They didn't ask about like my sobriety date. They didn't ask me about my drinking. Like they just talked to me and they wanted to get to know me. And, and that was huge for me. And so there was an old timer there and he, and he knows my mom and, he was just like, you're going to get a sponsor. And I was like, uh, and I was terrified of him at the time. So I was just like, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get a sponsor. Like just like shivering and like, just so scared because I'm like, I finally have friends. And then like, I'm like, I can't disappoint them. And so I like go up to his wife and ask her to be my sponsor. And she was like, I can't, I'm sorry. Like I have too many sponsees. And then she was like, hold on one second. I'm like 11 days sober. And this woman comes up to me and she was like, hi, I'm Robin. I'm going to be your sponsor. And I was just like, all right, I guess I have a sponsor. Like don't really have a say in this or whatever. And so like, that's when my sobriety started taking off. So unfortunately I didn't stay sober, but like my recovery, like the seed was planted for me. Like I had the sponsor, I had people talking to me, like life was pretty, pretty great. Like it was okay. Like it was manageable for me at that time. The most manageable I felt in a long time. And so, um, you know, I thought there was a certain substance I could smoke while still counting sobriety. So I continued doing that um, for summer 2010. And uh, um, yeah, like I was just like calling this lady, like every now and then, like going to some meetings, like, and then I went to like my first YPA and it was just awesome. Like it was just like, holy moly, like I want to do this forever. Like this is so crazy. People are dancing on chairs. They're like shouting, they're having fun. We're dancing. We're just like being crazy. Like like, I want to do this forever. Like, oh my God, like I'm 17. Like, this is like the coolest thing I've ever done besides getting drunk in a cornfield in Wisconsin. Like, this is great. Like, let's keep doing this. And so, you know, like, and then I started my senior year and I actually ended up going to sober high school and like life was taking off for me. And so actually, you know, I go to New York. I actually end up going to New York sober. I had three weeks sober at the time, but I was counting like four months. And like life just took off for me. It was just great. Like I thought I had everything, you know, like uh, counting sobriety and I'm, I'm going to high school. Like I'm going to graduate on time actually. And like life was pretty great. And then I finally get to this point in my sobriety. Like I was a, just over a year sober actually, but claiming I had a year and a half sober. And I remember I was sitting at um, a conference, a YPA, and it was a, a whole panel about people who lied about their sobriety. And I was just like, oh, wait a second. So what I ingested over that summer was not considered sobriety. And so now I'm stuck with this dilemma of where it's like I could become truly honest with where I'm at or I can continue with this lie and hope to still manage my life the way it is. And that was just not the case for me. God uh, realized like I had to be truly honest to keep living the life that I wanted. And so I came to this breaking point. I remember like it was just like such a, such a wall blocking my God for me that I, I remember I had to pull over the side of the road. Like I left a meeting, like I didn't feel connected. And I'm just, I'm at that jumping off point again, where it was just like, I know I can't drink because I've been in the program for a year and a half and I know this will not solve my problems but I can't keep this lie anymore. And so I had, so I called my sponsor and I was just like, I don't know what to do. I don't even know my real sobriety date. Like, I don't know. I just like stopped one day and like, I don't know. 
And so like we sat down, we went through a calendar and I got to just pick out sobriety dates. So I know for sure on August 14th, I was sober. I never put anything in my body since then. And uh, like, it was just like this huge weight lifted off my shoulders. And it's so crazy. I look back and it's like, why did I lie about such a stupid thing? Like I was just so fearful, like everything I did, like I would analyze and be so scared that you guys would just not love me. Like I always had that fear, but once that was off my chest, like, holy moly, could the, you know, spirit move through me. And that's really when my life took off. I got involved in WIPA and like I um, graduated high school. I went to beauty school. Like life was really happening for me. And then all of a sudden my life got flipped upside down again. Like it was my three years. And um, the day of my three years, my brother got sentenced to prison I found out my boyfriend was shooting up heroin. Like, it was just like, what the heck, God? Like, what? I just started getting my life back together. And, you know, it was, I really learned to lean into the program. Like, I really had to learn that, like, life happens and life happens real hard, real fast sometimes. And how do I stay okay with that? And so, Thank goodness I was in the center of Alcoholics Anonymous. I was, you know, I posted Wikipaw at this point. I was on Wikipaw Advisory. We started bidding for ECPAW. Like, and at that, like, with that service work, could I reach out to you guys? And, like, that was huge for me because it was so easy for me because I was already getting that rut to just see you guys and be like, oh, how's it going? I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's great. I'm fine. And then you guys being there, knowing who I am and being in the center could see through that to be like, you're not fine. What's going on? Talk to us. And so I really just like dove into the program again and had to realize like how to really bring God into all of my affairs and really give everything to him and and how to like be a good sister still and how to be a good daughter and how to support while all of my life around me is falling apart, you know? And so I'm just like grateful for the service work to keep me in the center, to keep me humble enough to ask for help. And so, you know, of course all that happens and um, I hated my job too. And so like another huge thing was happening was just like, I don't know what to do. And like with having a learning disability and never being good at school, like it was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to go to college. And like, I never took an ACT. I had a 1.77 GPA from high school. Like, I don't know what college is even gonna accept me. Like, this is just awful. And I just took the leap. I applied for a college and they accepted me for some crazy reason. And like, I just graduated in December and I started at UW Milwaukee and like this past month. And like, it's just like crazy, like looking back, like the most fearful things in my life has come true and I've stayed sober through it. And it's because of this program and it's because of the service work to teach me how to be humble and how to ask questions and how to get the help. And, you know, like the biggest thing today, like what my life looks like today is just like, you know, especially for school is like I show up early. I stay late. I come prepared. I bring my book just like at my home group. Like I bring my book every week. So I bring my books to school and I ask questions just like with my sponsor. Like if I don't know something, I ask her questions. And you know, when I bring that mentality into all my affairs, like everything is so much more manageable. And like when I bring it to my work, cause I have like a real job now. Like I have to like dress nice and like show up and like do real things. And it's crazy. Because a girl like me was never going to do that. Like a girl like me was going to die at 20, never working a job because I never even had a job until I got sober because I was too drunk to get one. Um, so it's just absolutely crazy to see where my life is today. And like I said, like um, I just bidded for Wikipaw and we won host, which is like super exciting. So our whole area is just like on fire again. I'm on ECPaw advisory. So again, like I always just know like, if I keep that service work, keep working with my sponsor and keep working with these girls, like no matter what happens around me, like life is going to be okay because we have this beautiful program that's filled with alcoholics that have been through what I've been through, but I just have to be willing to share what I've been through so then they can give me the solution. So really that's all I got guys. Thank you.